Greetings new pirates and welcome to Sea of Thieves. So you just made your pirate and you're itching to sail the seas. This is a quick start guide to get you out sailing. First, we will discuss which ship you would want to start with out of the three. The sloop, the smallest of the three, holds two crew members. It has one sail, two cannons. This is the slowest ship with the wind, but it is also the quickest ship against the wind, and it's also the easiest to maneuver, making it a choice for solo players. The brigantine, or brig as commonly referred to in game, is a mid-sized ship. It holds three crew members, has two sails, four cannons, it's a good balance between the sloop and the galleon. The galleon, larger ship, holds four crew members, has three sails, eight cannons, the hardest ship to maneuver by far, but it's also the fastest with the wind, but slowest against the wind. The difference between open crew and closed crew is open crew lets anybody join the game. Closed crew is invite only, or anybody on your friends list can join your game. For a new player, if you want to jump in and play with your fellow pirates, I recommend the Galleon on an open game. If you want to solo and try the game out by yourself, I highly recommend the Sloop. In a new game, you will first start in a tavern. There are different reputation factions in Sea of Thieves. We will focus on the three main ones you will be dealing with right away. Which is the Gold Hoarders, the Order of Souls, and the Merchant Alliance. Gold Hoarders, recognized by their green tents and key symbol, this faction offers voyages that have you sailing around the world to find buried treasure. There are two different types of Gold Hoarder maps, a simple map that has an X marks the spot, or it has riddles, clues, that reveal themselves along the way to help you find the location of the buried treasure. When you find treasure chests, this is the guy you sell them to. Order of Souls, located in the purple tents surrounded by skulls. This is a bounty voyage, a kill quest of sorts. You get a wanted poster of undead skeleton captains. The number of captains will range from 1 to 4, and there is usually waves of undead skeletons until the captain spawns, and you will kill them and claim their skull. This is who you sell the skulls to. Merchant Alliance. They are located on the dock with a map next to them. They have two different types of voyages, fetching cage animals or cargo runs. There are three types of animals to fetch, chickens, pigs, or snakes. Cargo runs is a point A to point B style voyage. You pick up cargo at one person, read the delivery note, and take it to the person located at point B. Now let's bring up your inventory wheel. Your limited supply items are bananas, used for restoring your health, cannonballs, and planks of wood to repair your damaged ship. Next is your spyglass, used for scouting. Right click to zoom in on selected areas. The shovel is used for digging up treasure. The lantern helps you see at night and is used in riddles. The bucket is for bailing water out of your ship. The compass not only helps you navigate the world, it is also used in riddle voyages to mark how many paces you need to dig. Your ship has three supply barrels that allow you to stock your ship up for long voyages. Cannonballs, wood, and bananas. A new ship will be stocked with 15 bananas, 15 wood, and 45 cannonballs. Your ship also comes equipped with an armory that allows you to swap weapons anytime. There are four different types of weapons, and you can equip two of any four. Your main weapon is your cutlass. It not only can be used offensively, but it also can be used defensively to block sword attacks. If you hold down your left click, you can charge and do a special attack. The flintlock is a mid-range weapon with the fastest reload time. It does 50% damage to other players. The Blunderbuss is a short-range shotgun-style weapon, making it a great in-your-face weapon, but a poor choice at any type of range. The Eye of Reach is a sniper-type weapon. It has the highest damage at 80% and has a bit of a knockback. It also has the longest reload time. The center of the scope is marked where the three cracks meet on the lens. Each weapon carries five shots. You can reload the weapon at any ammo crate which are found on your ship and sometimes on islands. This is the table used for throwing down voyages. Each crew member can throw down their own voyage. 
and then they are voted on. The majority of votes wins. As I am the only player, I only need my vote. Each player can carry three voyages in their inventory at any time. Voyages are purchased from the three factions we discussed earlier. If you pull up your map wheel, you can see how many maps you have. Each voyages will generate a random number of maps. In addition, you can find more maps and messages in the bottle. And these maps are optional and not needed to complete your voyage. This is the map table that will give the location of your ship and help you find the islands that are located in your voyage. When you find the island that you are looking for, you can simply left click on it to mark the location of the island, making it easier to find later on. The capstan is used to drop and hoist the anchor. When raising the anchor, the more players on it, the faster it will raise. To raise or lower the sails, use the F key on the cleat. Press S to lower and W to raise. To angle your sails, you click on the pulley system and use A for left and D for right. When you want speed, you want to angle the sail to catch the wind. You have full wind when you hear the sail pop. The helm is used to steer the ship. You will hear a clicking noise when the ship is at true center and your helm is also marked for center as well. Larger ships require more helm turns, which means you need to hear the click to know you are driving true. Cannons can be aimed by dragging your mouse or using the WASD keys. You can tell visually when a cannon is loaded because it has a wick. To reload the cannon after firing, use R. If you have cursed cannonballs, you can load them faster with Q while you are on the cannon. Cannons are not only for firing cannonballs. They also can be used by players to launch themselves. If at any point you are too far away from your ship in the water, a mermaid will spawn and take you back to your ship. If you ever accidentally fall off your ship, swim away the opposite direction to make the mermaid spawn faster. Your ship has lanterns outside and inside. Most people turn off their outside lanterns to make it harder to be spot by enemy ships. If you need to repair your ship, make sure you have planks of wood in your inventory. Repair your ship and then bucket out any existing water to keep your ship from sinking in the future faster. You must throw the water out of the side of the ship. Well, that's the very basics to get you started on your Pirate Legend journey. There is of course a whole lot more to the game, and I will cover it in more videos. If this video helped you in any way, I would appreciate the feedback. Bye for now, mateys, and happy sailing!